Hello and welcome from the Automotive Tech AD 2017 from Berlin. I'm here with John Hughes from Tesla Motors. Hello John, thanks again for sharing your time for the interview. Yeah, absolutely. It's really a pleasure for us. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, could you please briefly introduce yourself and give us a few insights about your professional background? Sure. Yeah, so I've been um, at Tesla for the past three and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, and before that I was uh, with Honda Racing. So I've got um, sort of a big uh, background in embedded systems, um, embedded automotive systems, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I did, so I did race cars first, um, and then I did a Tesla um, <clears throat> embedded control systems for powered closures. So I worked on the Model X Falcoming Doors, which is a super cool project for me. And then I've been, yeah, for the past year and a half, um, working on embedded um, systems and up and down the stack on uh, uh, Tesla's auto, uh, autopilot team. Mm -hmm. Speaking of super cool, mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow you're going to have a World Cafe session at mm -hmm. the event yeah. about challenges for virtual testing scenarios for level 3 or 4 uh, automation. Uh, what exactly um, are the particular points about level 3 or 4 automation uh, comparing it to level 1 or 2? Yeah, so when I think about testing level three and four compared to one and two, it's sort of the difference between being able to sort of linearly progress through a development of, okay, well, we've got these, these fixed requirements and we're going to develop some software and we're going to, you know, test against this set of, of requirements and if it passes, we're going to ship it. Uh, when you get to three and four, I, I kind of feel like you need to have you need to have some, some additional sort of feedback loops. And, um, you know, there's, there's so many corner cases and, and, and the, the long tail of testing um, all of this, the, the, the different possibilities um, at level three and four, I think means that you will never be able to, you know, set, put, put, a, put a, land, a line in the sand and say, okay, it's ready to release, mm -hmm. right? It has to be like sort of a continual improvement and a continual validation. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, can you give us an uh, example or a few examples of how corner cases look like? How do you test or simulate them? Um, yeah, so I think a large part of sort of catching those type of corner cases and the, and the corner cases are everything from basically anything you can't think of. So if we have, um, you know, we have an entire fleet of cars that are, that are driving, the customer is going to experience some particular scenario. There's going to be some sort of configuration of cars at an intersection or um, like a, an on-ramp junction that we've just never seen before, that we've never thought about before. And I guess one of the challenges is coming up with ways to, how can we expand um, the search space of our testing to try to, in an automated way, mm -hmm. catch these, these corner cases? Okay. Is that yeah. something uh, that you also... Uh, looking forward to regarding uh, to the World Cafe, uh, to the participants, to get some inter insights about those things? I think that's definitely something that's going to come up. I think a lot of people are aware of just how big the, 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 the test space is. It's not something that you can just cover 100%, like I said before. You're going to have to come up with some sort of strategy of how do we, how do we statistically test this, this software? Um, and so I'm really looking forward to seeing and, and sort of finding out what approaches other people have taken before. Um, I'm also really interested in, in sort of the, the, the technical details of how people have implement, implemented their simulation and testing and validation stacks. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, finally, the last question is about the conference. Okay. Uh, what are your hopes or what are your expectations regarding the insights in general? What are you expecting or who are you expecting to meet at the conference? Tesla is a, a, has a, co a company culture that's kind of a little insular, um, especially we're in North America and, and this conference is, you know, it's got a lot of the European um, players here. So I'm really excited to sort of find out what's going on outside in the rest of the world. Um, you know, f find out what, what the, the tier two and tier three suppliers are doing. Um, just because I don't, at Tesla, I don't necessarily get a lot of experience and exposure um, to that type of stuff. Okay. Well then, John, thanks again for sharing your time with us. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, thanks for the interview. Okay, you're welcome.